last time on Sammy Hitsky Fishing. I'd gotten well and truly stuck into my beach adventure, collecting bait, finding some lovely gutters and getting amongst some great fishing. I'd also cooked up an easy feed on the sand and stayed up most of the night in the hopes of tangling with some trophy fish, which didn't really go to plan. With a full day still remaining, I couldn't wait to get stuck into some more fishing. That's a better one. Another absolute donkey. Get up close and personal with some friendly locals and enjoy some of my hard earned catch cooked over the coals. It was going to be a great day. <laughs> Have a go there. Well guys, not gonna lie, didn't set an alarm when I got to bed last night. It was about three o'clock in the morning, so I thought, I have a bit of a sleep in, I'll wake up, the swag will get hot, all that sort of jazz. Uh, turns out I didn't wake up and had a nice old sleep in, so this is the view that I've, I've woken up to. Have a go at that. Absolutely spectacular. What a day. I do know one thing. All this sleeping in has made me pretty hungry. I think it's time to cook up a feed. But of course, sitting down with a coffee and taking in one hell of a view was always gonna take priority. On a day like this, you just have to soak it all in. I even managed to spy a gutter or two down the beach that would be worth a look for dart a bit later on in the day. Right, here's where we're at. Gonna fill it up one of these Taylor fires going, waiting for that to reduce down to coals. I've had a coffee, so I'm back in gear. I'm ready to rock and roll. But we're gonna fill it up a Taylor. We're gonna scale it as well. And I'm actually gonna butterfly it out and cook it pretty well whole over the fire. You'll see. It's a bit of a fancy way to do it, but hey, with a setting like this, you may as well go a little bit fancy. There's our specimen there. Lovely, fat, deep tailor. Good class fish, probably high 40s. Beautiful eating size. What we're gonna do first, knock those scales off. Everywhere though, everywhere. Righto, I'm gonna take the head off. So that will just get in the way. Should just be a bit of a... Try and keep those guts intact. And now, for the fun part. This is a bit tricky. It's a lot easier on species like snapper and that sort of thing where they're a bit thicker boned but essentially what we're going to try and do oh, road up oh bugger that's the uh the row usually i'd have a crack of that but that one seems to have a few worms in it bit of a shame and now we're going to try and leave the rib cage in so there's a bit of fancy knife work involved here it is a bit fiddly not gonna lie to you. Sharp knife is key. So we've gone around the back of the, the ribs there. We're at the pin bones now. Other side of the spine. See it's starting to come away. Now you don't wanna go through the fillet. You wanna leave it attached at the very top. And we wanna do the exact same on the other side. Now, all you gotta do is nick that frame. That should come out there, like so. Give it a little crack. And there you have a beautiful butterfly tailor. Now, there is still pin bones in it there, but we're gonna leave those in just for 
for presentation, makes it look good. If you were in a sh in some form of a restaurant, they'd probably get the tweezers out and um, and cut a and pull them out. But that'll do. Let's go chuck it on the fire. <sighs> Someone's getting a free lunch. Haha. <laughs> There's the culprits. Seeing those sea eagles getting around jogged my memory to try something I'd always wanted to do. It involved a tailor frame from one of the fish that I'd filleted the day before. We're going to need to see that again in slow motion. They're absolute silent assassins of the sky. Okie dokie. That fire's just about ready to rock and roll. Let that heat up. You want, we're going to cook the fish on here, so you want that over the main part of the flame. But we also don't want too much direct flame, so we might let that go just a little bit longer. So that's good heat. That'll be good. Now fish prep. All you want to do is make sure that skin is really dry. As dry as you can get it. I'm purposely leaving it out in the open to get a bit of breeze on it. The drier your skin, the more chance you've got of a crispy, crispy skin. Now if you had salt, which I forgot to bring, now would be the time to chuck some on. I didn't bring any. It's at home on the kitchen bench waiting to be packed. So I'm just going to put a bit of oil on there and that'll do it. Now a little side quest here. Knob of butter. Big old squeeze of garlic. And of course a deadly duo. Bit of chilli on there as well. Lovely. We're just going to chuck that guy there. He'll take a little bit long because it's not direct heat. Just want him to melt down nicely. Quick pat with oil. Okay. Here we go. Yum, yum, yum. Now we're not going to be turning this at all. So it's going to cook all from one side up. Might just get the spatula and hold it down a bit while that skin contracts because it's so fresh. Look at that garlic butter coming along nicely. That's going to be beautiful. Oh, no, that's starting <clears throat> to look really good. Just going to give this a bit more heat. The old garlic butter. Oh yeah, little bug, because now's the time you want to start spooning it over there. And that's going to keep your fish moist. This has probably only got another couple of minutes left. Like I said, we're not, we're not flipping this fish. Cook one side through. Quick sticky bait. Oh, she's looking unreal. Just got to watch those flare ups. If you're getting direct flame on your fish, you'll burn it. But the wind is giving us a big old helping hand here at the moment. See how that whiteness is almost through to the top? Once it gets just starting to go white on the top here, you can pull it off because you know it's done. Crispy skin check. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that. Unreal. Well guys, we're gonna have to do something I didn't want to do. We're gonna have to flip here, cause uh, that wind is taking all their heat away. So we're gonna go a big flip. It's not ideal, but have to be done. Look at that though. How good does that look? It's not gonna take long on the other side. We've still got some garlic butter there to, to finish it off. Look at that. Crispy skin tailor. Righto. Let's uh let's see here we've gone. Crispy skin. That goes on the bottom. 
beautiful up top. Spoon over a bit more of that garlic butter. Now at this stage, drizzle lemon juice. You could do whatever you want. I like it as is. Ladies and gentlemen, breakfast of champions. Have a go at that. Chili, garlic butter, crispy skin tailor, freshly caught the night before, over the fire. In my opinion, it does not get any better than that. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this and get stuck into that view. Oh. Yeah, hot tip for playing, those playing at home, don't forget your pin bones run along here. If you know your fish anatomy, you'll be fine. Just kind of separate around them. If not, um, best of luck to you, you'll find them eventually. Or give this top half to someone you don't like. Let's have a little taste test. Look at that, crispy skin. Mmm, delicious. Like with my coffee earlier, it's not too often you get to sit in a spot like this and enjoy a meal you just cooked over the fire. Rushing is just simply out of the question. I even got a front row seat to watch a couple of whales cruise by. The same whales that somehow vanished the second I sent the drone out to film them. Typical. With a full belly and some inviting gutters starting to call my name, it was time to pack up camp, reload the car and start thinking about my next target species, the mighty dart. back on the beach awesome lunch camps packed up rest of the day ahead of me I think coming into low tide the best bet is to um, use some of those pippies we got yesterday or ugris and see if we can't find a couple of dart might chuck another bait out for a tailor a stray tailor middle of the day you get the odd one or two particularly around the tide change but um, they're generally not thick and fast unless you find a school but we should be able to pluck off a few dart maybe a brim or a, uh, a whiting as well see what we can find a short drive up the beach didn't reveal anything too exciting in the gutter department. So, a quick U-bolt. And back down to the gutter near where I camped that I'd spotted with the drone. Like tailor fishing, chasing dart off the beach is something I'd always done. In fact, before I was even strong enough to cast a tailor rod by myself, I was somewhat of a dart specialist but for some reason they seem to cop a bit of flack in the beach fishing circles. Mainly due to the alleged poor eating qualities, which I can assure you are more likely due to angler error than the fishers. But when it comes to dart, believe me when I say it, there is absolutely nothing not to love. Let's go over cast. Righto, got a nice little gutter behind me there. I'm gonna have a crack, see if we can't get a dart or a brim or a, or a whiting. Now, to open up your pippies, you can either use a pippy knife where you slide it in and cut the muscle that connects it, or it's a bit barbaric, but if you just chuck them on the ground and they land flat, that uh, smashes one of the sides and reveals that prime bait. Now I've got the super light outfit here. Just got a little size one long bait holder hook and a, a smallish size sinker. All you do is just thread the bait on. I'm chasing darts, so I'm going to use the whole lot. If you're chasing whiting, you just use smaller kind of strips. Bait presents like that. Chuck it out on the light stuff, and away we go. You'll see this gutter. We've got the back bank there, the shallow channel, and the corner over here. I'm going to fish this channel onto the corner. Usually they'll sit around there. It obviously changes every time, but it's a good place to start. Yeah. 
pays to keep your eyes on the waves as well. Just quite often you'll uh, see them in the waves. Seems that we've got a bit of sweep here. Couple of touches then. Miss him. Done like a dinner. There we go. Got him. <laughs> yes. Has to be a dart in there somewhere. The thing with dart is you never really know how big they are until they're on the beach. One of the best fighting fish, pound for pound. Feels like there's a bit of weight there. I don't think he's huge. Look at him go! Here we go, come over here fella. He's a good duck. There you go, swallowtail dart. One of the most prolific and hardest fighting fish you'll find in the surf. This guy absolutely scoffed the hook down the hatch, put up a good show for himself. And uh, look, if I can get that hook out, I might send him back. If not, he's coming home with, whoop. He's gonna come home with me because they make some fantastic um, sashimi. Also beautiful to eat. A lot of people don't like them. I reckon it's because they're pretty hard to clean if you're uh, not experienced on the knife. But I love them. Great fun, great chewing, great sashimi, great everything. Now, tip for young players, they've got spikes here and spikes on the top. So they are pretty fun to hold. Oh, well, there we go. That hook's out. This guy, lucky day. See you, mate. All right, let's see if he's got any mates. That one came right out of that, the thick of it. Right there, that's the spot. Despite getting lucky in the first couple of casts, there didn't seem to be any more action in this part of the gutter. Now dart are one of those fish that are generally pretty onto it if there's a bait in the area, so I like to keep moving around until I find them. We go. Come on. There we go. Got him. Yes. I don't think this is too big. This one. Right, the shore dump there. I think it's just a little fella. Oh, he's gone. With the last fish hitting almost instantly after casting to a new part of the gutter. I moved the gear down to try and focus my efforts and see if there's any more in the area. A 
Got him. Instant. See? That's why you move around. I'll be somewhere. Ah, he's not as good as that first fella. Ow! See, I'm getting spiked just for the sake of you guys. That's probably a bit more typical size dart. You know, they plague around in that, that sort of size. Very hard to hold up the camera, but you get the idea. See you, mate. Oh, instant. That's a better one. Yeah, that's a good one. They're just sitting in that wash there. This is a real nice one. Taking line and everything. Running up the beach. This might be a real nice start. Hey, look at that. Gentlemen's hours. You come out, catch a really nice fish, pulls a bit of string, good eating. Great fun for the kids and stuff as well. I can see him in the water there, he's a nice fish. There he is. Oh, it's a lovely dart. Don't rush him now. Here we go. Run him up the beach with this one. Oh yes. Oh yes. That is a dart. That is a hooter dart. Now guys, just giving you a big old spiel about how I'm probably not gonna keep one for the table. Have a go at that. That is a hooter dart. I'm gonna take him back for a measure. I reckon he's gonna go the 40 centimeters, the magic 40 centimeter mark. That's a crack, I took a heap of string. That's just good on us fun. Oh, gonna get wet. That is just good on us fun for middle of the day. Have a go. See if I can hold, oh, he's already done me once in the thumb. How much fun is that? That's the sort of dart you want to catch. 42 centimetres. That's a cracker. How good is that? Got him. Feels like another good fish.
name a more awkward fish to hold. Another beautiful little dart. Don't need this guy. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Another absolute donkey. Another chunky dart. Look at those colors. They were definitely schooled up and well and truly on the tune now. It was quickly turning into a full on dart crank. Fish are cast at the moment, they're all just sitting on that corner. He's only a little one. Righto, last bait. Then I'm gonna have to start making a move home. It's been a hell of a trip. It's gonna be a shame to leave it like this. Fish on, beautiful weather, but get back to reality. There he is. This will be the last one. Feels like a pretty good one too. This is a nice one. This will be the ideal fish to finish off on, I think. Oh, he's not even a big one. He's just spirited. Oh, he's not too bad. One last beautiful dart to finish off the trip. I think it's time to head, head for home. It's been an absolute hell of an adventure. Been very lucky with the fishing. Managed to get all our target species, bar the big green back and a Jew, but I'll tell you what, definitely not complaining absolutely amazing trip but all things got to come to an end it's time to head for home thanks for that Cruising back up the beach towards the track, I couldn't help but be thankful for the trip I'd had. The fishing, the weather and the camping had all been epic to say the least. And then, as if for one final goodbye present, I spotted another patch of whales just off the back of the breakers. The perfect opportunity to capture them with the drone.
what a way to end the trip. And by the looks of those clouds building up in the background, it was definitely time to wrap it up and head for home. Lucky I left when I did too, as some pretty gnarly storms went through the area later that afternoon. As with all beach trips, there's still plenty of work to do once you get home. I strongly recommend giving your vehicle a thorough wash with something like this four-wheel drive and RV wash from Salty Captain to help get rid of all the salt and sand from your trip. My other trip essentials are my GME UHF because the reception is really patchy on the beach and you can't rely on your phone if you get stuck. And I also take a PLB because I'm fishing by myself late at night. If something goes pear-shaped, I need to be able to alert emergency services after hours. With all that done, don't forget you still have to hit the filling table and process the rest of your haul. Should be enough for a couple of feeds from this lot. Looks like fresh fish is back on the menu tonight. And you know what? That's fine by me. Well guys, that brings us to the end of my overnight adventure. I know I don't know about you, but the only thing this trip has done for me, it's got me even keener to do some more beach fishing before the summer pelagic start calling my name. So you can probably predict a few more sandy adventures coming your way. Guys, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you're all safe and well, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Cheers. Oh, drop it in the sand. Good.